Hello, I'm Dr. Jim Stone, Clinical Professor of Medicine at the University of Calgary. Thank you for joining me today for this presentation entitled Cardiovascular and Fitness and Mortality Following Contemporary Cardiac Rehabilitation. 25 years ago, Dr. Neil Oldrich and colleagues published the results of a meta-analysis which documented these significant and substantial positive benefits on cardiac rehabilitation on both cardiac mortality and total mortality. Yet in the 25 years since that publication, cardiac rehabilitation has continued to remain on the fringes of cardiac care. Healthcare practitioners, particularly cardiologists, have continued to challenge the veracity of this evidence, particularly in contemporary environments where the overwhelming majority of patients undergo revascularization and are prescribed antiplatelet agents and statins. Our cardiac rehabilitation research group here in Calgary recently published the results of a large retrospective cohort looking at the effects of cardiac rehabilitation on contemporary patients who have already undergone revascularization therapy in association with acute coronary syndromes and in whom the overwhelming majority are on appropriate therapies with respect to antiplatelet agents, beta blockers, statins, and renin angiotensin aldosterone inhibitors. As a follow-up to that study, this particular study looks specifically at the effects of cardio fitness on mortality in patients undergoing contemporary cardiac rehabilitation. In this figure, we see baseline fitness as a predictor of long-term mortality. Relative to those with the lowest fitness, patients who had intermediate fitness, i.e. 5 to 8, achieved a 46% reduction in mortality, whereas those in the highest fitness group experienced a 16% relative reduction in mortality. Overall, for each one met improvement in cardio fitness during the cardiac rehabilitation program, patients experienced a 16% reduction in mortality. However, comma, for those who were in the lowest fitness group initially, a one met improvement over the course of the cardiac rehabilitation program actually translated into a 30% reduction in relative mortality. Even after a year from graduating the cardiac rehabilitation program, each one met increase in METs translated into a 22% reduction in overall mortality. The results of this study clearly demonstrate that cardio fitness is a key determinant of total mortality and cardiac mortality in patients undergoing cardiac rehabilitation. Keen observers among you will note that this is not new information. Indeed, in 2002, Dr. Terry Cavanaugh and his colleagues in Toronto published a large study in circulation documenting similar effects with respect to MET levels and improvements in outcomes. This was followed in 2003 by a study in women showing very similar results. However, the results of both those studies have been criticized because they do not reflect contemporary cardiac rehabilitation programs or patients. In contemporary programs, most patients have undergone invasive coronary revascularization and most patients are on appropriate medical therapy. Within our study, even after coronary revascularization and in a setting where the vast majority of patients are on treatment target driven risk factor reduction therapies, we still saw significant improvements in total and cardiac mortality. So in summary, the results of the present study clearly demonstrate that cardiac rehabilitation programs are capable of significantly improving total and cardiac mortality through improvements in cardio fitness. And perhaps most importantly, the patients who saw the largest relative improvements in their total and cardiac mortality were those who started the program with the lowest initial cardio fitness levels. Based on this information and an ever expanding research around cardiac rehabilitation, it is becoming increasingly clear that cardiac rehabilitation should be and must be standard therapy for all patients with acute coronary syndromes and documented coronary artery disease. Thank you for your time and attention. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.